大丈夫そうです。
So shall we start now? Uh, good evening and actually good afternoon everyone and thanks for joining uh, the se seminar for ASIC TC28 uh, application of monitoring technology for infrastructures. Uh, my name is Masaki Nakano from JSC and I'm a secretary of ASIC uh, TC28. So it's great to have uh, members here to have the uh, wonderful session. So uh, here's the today's uh, agenda. Uh, going to the uh, introduction, I'm actually opening remarks from the chair. Then we're going to have an introduction of TC28 itself and also some current activities of TC28. Now afterwards, uh, we have four presenta presentations from three member societies. Korea, Vietnam, and Japan regarding the monitoring of infrastructures. And uh, some of them are uh, uh, presenting through online web, from the website, uh, web, no, from on, uh, web meeting. So uh, they're already uh, in the meeting. Then uh, if we have a time, we're gonna have uh, some discussion and summarization about the monitoring of uh, infrastructures. Okay. So uh, let's start opening remarks from the chair of TC28, uh, Professor Eiki Yamaguchi, please. Uh, thank you very much for coming to our session. And uh, of course, I should welcome you. <laughs> um, Infrastructures are very important for our society. January 1st this year, a big earthquake hit the one peninsula in Japan. Many roads are connected and many villages and towns were isolated. It makes sure that the road is such an important infrastructure, lifelines, right? So, but the infrastructure damaged not only by the earthquake, damaged by time. So we are having actually the problem, it's a social, big social problem in Japan, the aging of the infrastructures. But replacement of those old, for example, bridges is not feasible because it costs too much. And we try to maintain and ex extend its life. For that, one means to evaluate the, how good or how bad the infrastructure is, is the monitoring and our TC is to show us, you know, try to fee try to see how to use the monitoring, how to apply the monitoring to see, actually evaluate the performance of the old infrastructures and to see what we can do with those aging uh, infrastructures. So today, uh, some of the members of TC, TC members are presented, are pr going to present their work on these monitoring technologies and um, um, we are happy to have some, dis if we can have some discussion, exchange ideas for the, I think that this problem is common to many countries, not only in Asia, but other areas also. So we are trying to come up with a good uh, information about this one. And to that end, hopefully this TC session will be helpful for us to do to achieve our goal. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Professor Yamaguchi. And the chair, our chair already explained about the objectives of uh, TC28. Um, for the uh, very first time, for the people who uh, attending this kind of TC28 uh, seminar or meeting the, for the first time, I will briefly uh, introduce some of the, uh, the objective and also some activities of TC28. And here's the TC members shown here. Um, we have uh, 15 members from, uh, 15 representatives from uh, nine uh, societies, ASIC societies. And also we have a Japanese National Committee now who are uh, helping, uh, uh, supporting the TC members. Then uh, they are all a different uh, position uh, different regarding uh, the monitoring pro uh, of infrastructures. So two of them are going to uh, 
introduce some of the example of the monitoring infra infrastructure monitoring today. Then here's the background of TC establishment. So infrastructure is critical for economic prosperity, economic growth, and a sustainable uh, development. And while many countries invest heavily in infrastructure construction, much less attention has been paid to maintenance work, as uh, the Professor uh, Yamanichi mentioned. So, um, but actually, we could focus, uh, we could uh, pay attention to the maintenance. And then for the maintenance, because of the, uh, the limitation of the budget and so on, it's a little bit difficult to uh, operate and maintenance at the same time. So, um, the, how we gonna uh, achieve the, this maintenance work is uh, uh, a kind of issue of the common, uh, common work in this world, not only Asia. Then, the one of the key uh, technology is that uh, monitoring technology. So uh, that could be our kind of uh, big tools and a big uh, uh, problem uh, solutions. So uh, utilizing new technology for systematic infrastructure management is essential for uh, both preventing accident and also minimizing life cycle cost. So objectives of this TC is severe uh, shown in here and civil infrastructures has been constructed across the Asian region. However, maintenance has already become a big issue. Then a lot of monitoring technology and products are developed, but the administrators or uh, asset managers are struggling sometimes to choose how, what kind of technology uh, to use for uh, different purposes. So uh, this TC is to prepare the guidelines on the scheme of the maintenance of the infrastructures by making good use of monitoring technology, the maintenance work will be made sophisticated and efficient. So to accomplish this, uh, we have uh, some kind of uh, basis, base model, base uh, recommendations uh, which JSC has made. Uh, draft of a recommendation for utilization of monitoring technology in Japan was published in uh, June 2022. So uh, this in this TC, uh, we share the contents and then discuss and then developing and reconstructing as the ASIC guidelines. So the contents of these uh, recommendations are for, uh, shown in a full this uh, starting with the chapter one, that's the general provision. So what is the uh, uh, infra monitoring, infrastructure monitoring? And Starting with this, uh, monitoring of concrete slabs and concrete garden and steel garden and soil damage environment, and, and uh, kind of a unique guideline as shown in this uh, recommendation. Uh, he, it shows a collection of monitoring data and a data storage and uh, utilization. So it's kind of different uh, like uh, field of the civil engineers, but it's very important for infrastructure monitoring. So uh, today's the presentation has included one of those. Okay, so um, this is kind of brief introduction of myself, and then afterwards uh, we're going to have a recent activities and introduce recent activities of TC. From now on, I would like to explain about uh, the recent activities of our technical company. Uh, I'm Tetsuro Goda from Nippon Koei. Uh, so as Dr. Nakano mentioned in the previous meeting, uh, the one of the main purposes of uh, our TC is to make a, uh, is to establish a monitoring guideline which can be employed in Asian countries. Uh, we have had some meetings to share uh, the to share the problems and issues uh, of uh, maintenance, maintenance and monitoring in each country, and uh, now we are trying, to, uh, we are trying to make a, a new uh, monitoring guideline, so uh, reflecting their needs and opinions uh, from the TC members. So let me talk about the recent activity uh, of our TC uh, for the past year. Uh, the actually the we uh, the JSC already uh, have published uh, monitoring guideline. So
so we decided to make the, our uh, ASIC monitoring guideline based on JSCE monitoring guideline. So first we uh, translated the, can, can you show the, So, so first we uh, translated uh, the JSC guideline the from Japanese to English, and then we distributed it to the TC members uh, with the questionnaire uh, to correct uh, their opinions. Uh, and then uh, the questionnaire uh, includes uh, 18 questions here, uh, as you can see in the slide, and then uh, this time, the uh, veteran, uh, Korea, and Japan answered the question questionnaire, and uh, we had a discussion uh, TC in the TC meeting a couple of months ago, and uh, we uh, made a discussion on the result of the questionnaire. Uh, and uh, in the last uh, TC meeting, uh, we are mainly uh, exchange opinions uh, on the t uh, chapter one of the monitoring guideline. So I'd like to briefly explain about uh, the chapter one. Uh, the, the title of the chapter one is uh, general provisions and uh, including four sections, uh, scope, positioning of monitoring, monitoring plan and definition of terms. So from now on, I'd like to explain the details of the chapter one, uh, and then uh, I'd like to also explain the what uh, kind of discussion we have been made in our TC meeting. So the, this, is, this question is about uh, uh, the maintenance cycle, and the maintenance cycle has uh, four phases, uh, inspection, diagnosis, and uh, measures, and recording. And this is the basic concept uh, to maintain infrastructures in Japan. Uh, and also we have four phases uh, for the monitoring. Uh, monitoring to assist inspection, monitoring to assist diagnosis, the monitoring to monitoring the effect of repair and uh, reinforcement, and monitoring to assist emergency response. Uh, against the question, uh, the veteran says, uh, BFCA says uh, the starting point should be the inspection. I think it is correct uh, in the most cases. And the JSC said uh, monitoring to assist in emergency response is not r related to the maintenance cycle. Uh, KSC uh, pointed out a really important thing, uh, which is about uh, information delivery the from project information to maintenance. Uh, the in real situation, that we have a different data format in the uh, in uh, the in, in design and the construction and the maintenance we have a different data format, so it is uh, pretty important uh, to uh, just smooth uh, information delivery that to enhance the quality of the monitoring or maintenance. And uh, also the digital twin models that can be used for to uh, let the information delivery uh, more smoothly, and also digital twin models can be uh, employed to uh, enhance the quality of the analysis model too. Uh, and uh, I'd like to introduce uh, one other uh, quest question uh, about the control criteria. Uh, the here, the you can see the right figure the showing the, the uh, deflection of the uh, superstructure of a bridge. And uh, if the soundness of the su uh, superstructure uh, gets worse, and then the deflection that could be uh, increased uh, in this case. Uh, but uh, the control criteria is important, but uh, we wouldn't know uh, the how the uh, it is difficult to know the when we need to go to the next action, next movement. Uh, so it is important to know the control criteria. Uh, as actually, we have uh, many different structures uh, in this world and then uh, it is impossible to make the common criteria uh, to uh, the for, the for all structures. So it is uh, one effective way is to uh, 
to the case studies first, and then similar control criteria that can be employed to the similar structure. So that is one of the effective way. Uh, and uh, about this question, the KSC said uh, that we need to define indicators for the control criteria, and uh, the indicators need to be uh, derived from the baseline model. And the BFC, BFCA says uh, the prior deformation that could be more uh, complicated uh, for the control, to define the control criteria. Uh, anyway, that we need to define the control criteria step by step in the future. And this is the question not only, uh, not about the chapter one, but uh, issues of monitoring. Uh, and the small bridges located in rural areas do not tend to be uh, well maintained uh, due to the sh insufficient budgets or like, shortage of engineers. Uh, and the IoT beam digital twin or uh, new policy uh, made by the bridge owners uh, can be uh, used for the, to accelerate uh, applying the monitoring uh, technology so for uh, small bridges. Uh, and this is also the example of the, of the, of the question about the obstacles for applying uh, various monitoring techniques uh, to manage road structures. Uh, the, each country have a different uh, opinions and uh, for example, the appro approval procedure uh, can be long and complicated and also like V by C is not calculated well the, when we uh, decide the, to use uh, monitoring. So the, we need to uh, solve the, these kind of problems uh, to accelerate applying a uh, monitoring technique more. So the, this is uh, about the contents of the discussion we made. Uh, so that we will continue to make the basic version of monitoring guidelines. Uh, yeah, we, we, we are going to do it the continuous way. So thank you for listening. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Chang Shushin from uh, Zhongang University. Actually, um, I think the concept of monitoring need to be expanded. What is monitoring? We, we just say that the monitoring is sensing of the uh, bridge behavior. But uh, in this guideline, I, I found that the every observation of the bridge performance or the behavior is just like a, a monitoring. So we need to collect the data. So I need to introduce current status of bridge maintenance task in uh, Korea. I prepared some uh, issues and uh, some examples of the uh, monitoring. Oops. As we all know, uh, we have serious uh, problems of deterioration of our existing bridges. In Korea, we have uh, around 35,000 bridges, and most of them are, are the, the experiencing the aging problems. The problem is uh, the government lack of fund to manage the hold the bridges and also the uh, we have to uh, decide the whether we need to repair rehabilitate or replace those the existing bridges so engineers need to prepare how to decide how to support those decisions for the government and the local uh, authorities recently uh, in Korea, we experienced uh, some collapse, partial collapse, or the uh, some part of the uh, bridge components. So this is this bridge is located in the middle of a uh, uh, town, and uh, from the payment problems, give us 
gave the, uh, the, the possibility of crackings and water penetrate into the concrete and the, the reinforcement corroded and we lost the uh, bond between the concrete and reinforcement and cantilever part of the bridge collapsed and one casualty we had. So after this uh, collapse, uh, the local authority realized that they need to inspect carefully with uh, uh, the, the bridges uh, with uh, similar details and a similar period of construction. And uh, the, the from this uh, uh, part, uh, many engineers has uh, concern about the uh, old bridges, how we maintain, especially this kind of uh, the damages we cannot observe from the, uh, the, the theoretical inspection task. Actually, uh, local authorities spend very small money for the inspection task. So the engineer do not have enough time to look closely the uh, bridge uh, deteriorations. And one another uh, issue is the invisible damage inside of concrete bridges. To say this, the, we uh, found the one package of uh, external tendons. So this bridge is located in Seoul. So we blocked the traffic for a certain period. It was serious problems. And uh, we spent around three years to investigate all the external tendons, whether we have uh, corrosions or not. And we uh, took out the uh, corroded tendons and we did test whether uh, how much uh, uh, decrease of uh, tensile strength when you have a certain degree of uh, corrosion. So that is uh, important data for the assessment of the engineers. And another issue is the, when you have the uh, certain uh, change of behavior bridge, we need to know what could be the reason. But the invisible damages, it's really hard to inspect. So we need new technology for the inspection, like the NDE technologies we need. But uh, 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 we still have a uh, challenging the task to uh, inspect this kind of uh, new problems. You know, the, for common bridges in Korea, uh, when we complete construction, we may have this kind of load test. But the, from the load test, we have to establish the analysis model for the, as a baseline, right? But the problem is uh, when the engineers uh, the, the, uh, establish the analysis model, they use the mature properties from the design calculation reports, not from the construction record. You know, during the construction period, we do some mature tests, and we have some record of a construction period and sequence and tension forces everything, we have lots of data. But the, through the page of the uh, delivery, most of data we lose, right? The, the, all the data is in the documents, but the, in many cases we lose the documents. So the uh, engineers who assess the existing bridges, they do not have the, this uh, detailed data. So uh, we need to be careful about that. Anyhow, uh, we have a static test and dynamic test, but the, we do not have a monitoring system for this kind of common bridges. So this is very important data, even though uh, we do this uh, one-time test, but every two years, every five years, we have this kind of collection of data for the behavior of uh, bridge structures. But the problem is uh, currently uh, the analysis model is not safe and not transfer to the next company who assess the bridge. That is uh, another problem. So we have to have some uh, way to keep the data continuously. Uh, we call it as an update of the analysis model. This is a, a case of load test setup. So from the load test, we measure the uh, uh, deflection and some uh, strain gauges, strain values from the uh, uh, known value of uh, trucks rate. And then the, we compare with the analysis model and then the, uh, uh, assess the remained capacity of these uh, bridge structures. Of course, the uh, cable supported bridges, we have very excellent uh, monitoring system. As you see here, we have lots of uh, sensors. But the, uh, for more than 20 years, we spend huge amount of money for monitoring system. 
that many engineers think that the, it's useless because the structure is very sound, no damages. But uh, recently, we have uh, a serious concern about the uh, deterioration. And then the, we started to use the uh, health monitoring data for the maintenance decisions, right? So this is a new uh, way. And another way is uh, we found that uh, the structure behavior is slightly different from the design assumptions, from the uh, weather conditions and from the environmental conditions and loading, co loading conditions and the behavior of the structure itself. So we are trying to improve our design itself. So that is uh, another activity. And this is the uh, uh, new uh, uh, approach. Last year, Korean government supported one research project to build up the, uh, the digital twin model. This is Soya Bridge. For one year, they uh, collected, they just uh, collected all the uh, monitoring data and compare with the existing analysis model. And they try to interact, I mean, the update the existing models. And then the, from the signals, uh, we need to figure out whether the uh, behavior is uh, sound or the, whether we have some uh, problems of structure components. So uh, we, we are changing the, the practice of monitoring system. And another one is the, you know, the weather information system or the uh, message sign with uh, CCTV. This is a new way of monitoring. Right? We rely on the sensor data, but the sensor may have some problems, right? We have uh, the, the different uh, signals from the structure behavior. So we have uh, the another way to compromise those uh, possibility of errors from sensors. And through this process, uh, uh, mainly the bridge maintenance task is rely on the, uh, the inspection data, as you know. So we inspect every component of bridge members and including damage and maturity degradations and also the uh, some uh, problems of uh, the, the uh, damage itself. And then we accumulate every two years and every five years. But the problem is uh, uh, engineers who assess this uh, one bridge, they just uh, don't look back 10 years before or 20 years before. They just uh, look back two years or five years before. That's all, right? So that is the problem because uh, uh, they don't have any uh, way to the, the, uh, look at the whole data of bridge history. Anyhow, uh, we started to have some effort to collect data and also the, uh, the try to build up some uh, models to predict future performance. For example, the bridge slabs have different kind of uh, damages and uh, when it collect continuously, and then the one damage pattern will be progressed continuously and then under certain uh, conditions like, the, like uh, the traffic volumes and the environmental conditions and the acid salt and then the, we compare each other and to build up the uh, deterioration model. So now the, we start to uh, build up the deterioration model for the concrete slab and then the deterioration model for the bridge girders and then deterioration model for the bridge piers and abutment step by step. So this is the uh, current status. And in more digitalized way, we uh, use the building information modeling technologies to collect and federate all the data into the model data. So this is a way from the design data, we uh, started the, the baseline model and then the uh, update all the parameters through the uh, construction phase and then we de de deliver those uh, model and data to the uh, maintenance phase. And through the maintenance phase, if we have certain inspection data, we collect also and link to the uh, 3D models. And then this is a, a good way because uh, visually, bridge owners can uh, monitor and compare the uh, performance of each bridges and each components under different conditions and under different decision of maintenance work. Right? Different materials for repair, different strategy for rehabilitation, they will have different performance in the future. So we have some uh, dashboard for uh, bridge owners. And this is a uh, uh, Korea Expressway Corporation cases. The one line of uh, Expressway network, they collected data and expand. 
they have around uh, 10,000 bridges along the uh, highway networks. That they will uh, uh, complete this kind of efforts within a few years. And uh, I developed this kind of uh, BIM based uh, bridge maintenance system for Expressway Corporation uh, a few years uh, before. And uh, we collected uh, even the GPL data, ND data. Above the surface of the concrete slab, we have pavement. So we cannot look at the damage of upper surface of concrete slab. So we use the GPL data upper surface and the lower surface we use the visual inspection data so we combine together so systemic uh, data collection help us to assess exact performance of these uh, bridge structures and uh, I told you the uh, during the construction phase uh, we need uh, some way to collect data and uh, deliver to the maintenance phase up to now all the data is in documents and those documents uh, are not easy to use for engineers so among the documents we define the data models and these data is transferred to the next phase easily and then the engineer can handle the uh, change of uh, behavior and uh, last year we applied this kind of uh, data delivery for one uh, bridge construction project and we collected data, including the mature properties and the tensioning forces, camber changes, and the, the each period of uh, erections and the, uh, the assembly, and then the final uh, stage of the uh, bridge completion. And uh, this year, we will have load test, and then we complete the baseline model. To do this, uh, uh, we will propose new way of data delivery from the project information model to the uh, asset information models. And another issue uh, I already uh, explained to you, when you have the corrosion of this uh, invisible damage of tendons, what can you do? How can you assess the remain the capacity of this uh, one component or the bridge members or bridges? It's really a challenging task for engineers. We don't know the answer. Uh, we communicate with uh, uh, Italian engineers. They have a uh, collapse of Morandi Bridge and they have a uh, very detailed inspection of the corrosion of tendons, but they still have uh, struggling. How to give some uh, value of remained capacity when you find this kind of uh, internal corrosion of uh, single tendons or the multiple tendons within uh, the whole range of uh, span lengths with this uh, irregular position and the shape and quantities. So that is a challenging task. But anyhow, uh, by uh, the, the collecting the some uh, specimen uh, with the uh, uh, corrosion, we did te tensile test more than 100 cases. And the, by the uh, measuring the uh, degree of corrosion, we evaluate the remaining tensile capacity. And the more important thing is the the, the deformation capacity of corroded tendon is much, much lower than the normal case. So that is uh, uh, crucial for the uh, engineers to assess. So uh, uh, from, for this uh, technical committee, I, I want to propose that the, our collaboration. We can collaborate between bridge owners, or between engineers, and between researchers, because we have a similar damage report. Right, we collect it. So, for example, one uh, cases, every agencies of uh, bridge in, uh, owners can uh, have some uh, digitalized way of uh, data, and we share each other, and to build up the data twins or deterioration models. For example, the carbonation of concrete under different environmental conditions, or the corrosion of reinforcing bars under different conditions. We can collaborate, right? So that is a. Uh, uh, one of my uh, uh, suggestions, and another one is uh, when you collect those data, we can utilize the machine learning or AI technologies to assess. This is good because uh, when you collect more and more data, we will have uh, more and more reliable models to predict, and those models can be utilized by engineers in any country, right? So that is uh, uh, one way. And in the EAPS there, 
you have test group 5.6, that is uh, uh, BIM for uh, existing structures. So we are trying to uh, define the data model for the uh, existing bridge maintenance. And this is current situation. Uh, you know, for monitoring for the common bridges, we need very simple sensor system. And we cannot install the, the sensors for every bridge members. We have to define indicating member. Among 50 gutters, we just select one gutter as a critical member and then install very, this kind of very simple uh, the, the sensors. And uh, by the, the collecting data from sensors from the indicating members, we update our baseline model and then manage continuously through the life cycle of the bridge and the intact with a different uh, baseline model with a similar bridge types. And then we collect the, the uh, knowledge. So this is the current situation. And this sensor system can be, uh, uh, the, the can maintain the uh, sensor data without electricity. And when we inspect by the UAV scanning, the sensor data can be collected together. So this is a new way of approach. Okay, this is uh, uh, the, my presentation. So I think the monitoring need to uh, be defined again. Uh, this slide inspection data can be defined as uh, monitoring data. And uh, we need to uh, have some uh, way to validate our existing uh, management data. It's really hard to believe the, the existing uh, inspection data, those things. And the standard model can be defined by the uh, data delivery. And machine learning or AI technology can be useful when you have, have a collection of uh, enough data by collaborating each other. And uh, eventually, we have to have the network-based maintenance system by this kind of the, the connection of the monitoring and baseline models for whole network bridges. OK, thank you. Uh, can I my, uh, share my screen? Subject of the tension monitoring of uh, cable state bridge. Uh, to better understand monitoring, uh, it is crucial uh, to familiarize ourselves uh, with the structure of cable state bridge, uh, include, uh, including extra-dosed bridge uh, which have a similar structure. Uh, Maybe uh, some of you may know much more about the structure of uh, cable state bridge than I do. Uh, so a uh, bridge of this type uh, comprised of a pylon and a cable, state cable system. So road access, road across the distributed pylon. So 
table pro uh, outlines the various uh, deformations that may occur uh, in, the, in a steady cable system. So our monitoring system uh, primary focus is, is the state cable system. So there have been uh, some cases of so serious safety related events uh, caused by state cable breakage. Uh, so it is important to confirm integrity of the state, uh, state cable. Uh, but and on the other hand, so state cables themselves are located inside the state pipe. Uh, so, uh, and it is difficult to check the cable corrosion or other deformation by close visual inspe uh, inspection. So therefore, uh, it is important uh, to monitor the deformation of the state cable inside the state pipe uh, using ICT technology or on a periodic or continuous basis. So this slide uh, explains how uh, how tension can be calculated uh, using uh, the high high order higher order vibration method. So state cables natural frequencies are determined uh, using acceleration data uh, from sensor. So left uh, equation illustrated uh, illustrated uh, the correspondence between natural frequency and uh, tension. So by applying so measure the natural frequencies uh, to this equation. So we can estimate the tension of say, uh, the state cap. So uh, this method it itself is not new. So previously, uh, natural frequency uh, were measured by blocking so uh, bridge traffic and so forcing bridge to vibrate uh, using so some special instrument. Uh, but however, so in our si monitoring system, acceleration sensor, uh, are you trying to calculate uh, natural frequencies from ambient uh, vibration and so transmit the measure data wirelessly? So uh, we don't know, uh, we, uh, we, we don't need for the tra traffic disruption or forced vibration. So let's uh, uh, take a look at the configuration of uh, monitoring system. So our monitoring system uh, by works by utilizing uh, acceleration sensor. So installed on the state cable uh, to calculate the natural frequencies through the measurement uh, ambient uh, vibration. So each acceleration sensor has a built-in uh, so sub giga uh, much hop wireless communication ability. Uh, which allows so the measures data to be transmitted to uh, LTE network uh, via the other sensors and uh, gateway. So managing and management system, uh, which can be configured for either on premises or cloud operation, uh, it is the system estimates tension uh, from the uh, natural frequency transmitted by the sensor. So moreover, uh, the system enables administrators uh, to view sensor position and uh, monitor attention trends uh, through map and uh, graphical uh, re representation. So additionally, uh, it can transmit a lot uh, in the events of irregularity. So uh, we conducted so field measurement on Meiko Higashi Ohashi Bridge in Aichi Prefecture uh, over more than one year to validate so the practicality of tension monitoring. So this bridge uh, is under management uh, of Next Central Japan, uh, who is a Japanese expressway company. So while its acceleration sensor uh, are installed on, on both uh, innermost and the outermost and state cables. So the, these acceleration sensors are attached to uh, the take your side of the state cable uh, using the metallic band. So these, these sensors uh, have wireless communication capabilities and they uh, are battery powered. So eliminating the, the need for wiring and uh, simplify the installation. So 
changed uh, in the shape and the load distribution, as well as the grip and dry shrinkage and the, so some cross cross sectional defect in the cable uh, can lead uh, abnormal tension in state cable. So the, the threshold uh, for judging anomalies uh, in the tension during maintenance check is a change with intention of uh, plus minus five percent or more uh, from uh, the initial value uh, as measured by the high order vibration method. Uh, the on-site uh, measurement has annual fluctuation uh, of 2 percent, uh, plus minus 2 percent. So affirming the system's practically is de in de detecting uh, variation of so 5 percent, uh, which is maintenance standard. So however, uh, due to significant uh, vari variation in one of our measure measurements, so we recommend using a permanently installed uh, sensor to enable so, uh, averaging. Okay. Uh, so in, in conclusion, uh, let us summarize. So intensive uh, monitoring of state cable systems is critical uh, to structure in integrity of the cable state bridge. So uh, monitoring using the ICT technology is important uh, because uh, it is difficult to detect uh, critical uh, deformations of the cable in the state pipes uh, by visual inspection. And uh, calculating tension from natural frequency uh, using wireless acceleration sensor is a, a, an effective method for remote and continuous monitoring uh, without the need for traffic uh, disruption or positive vibration. So, uh, and the tension change threshold of uh, plus minus 5% is needed. So providing uh, a standard for detecting abnormal state cable tension. So primarily installed the acceleration sensors uh, controls the allowable range of variation and improve the accuracy. Oh, so finally, uh, please take one minute to learn about our product. So uh, the Zero Energy IoT series is designed for monitoring various infra infrastructure, so not only for bridges. So OK uh, offers uh, Zero Energy uh, IoT series, uh, which is include uh, wireless acceleration sensor and uh, Zero Energy gateway. So Gateway is also available with uh, water level gauge and or uh, with, with a high sensitivity camera. So all devices, uh, battery, uh, battery or solar powered. So and uh, not required uh, any external power supply. So if you are interested in our product, so please contact uh, at me at later. Okay, so that concludes my presentation. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ben Lei. I'm a senior lecturer at uh, the School of Built Environment and Engineering, Anglia Ruskin University, United Kingdom. And this is an honor for me to present this uh, presentation.
from the tunnel uh, center line. So with that information, the, the magnitude and the extent of the uh, ground surface settlement uh, induced by tunneling, the, um, uh, the, the authority, the project owner, uh, ha can, can have a better plan for, for the uh, land clearance uh, reinforcement measure if they need to, and um, and so on. <clears throat> and um, the next session is the longitudinal uh, settlement uh, caused by the tunnel construction. So as you can see here, in front of the tunnel, the ground surface settlement is very small, almost close to zero. And the main significant uh, majority of the settlement occur after the uh, the TBM phase. So this is the direction uh, for, of the TBM is go from the right hand side to the left hand side. And as you can see here, the uh, the, the, the surface uh, settlement it increased when the TBM advanced uh, to the marine drilling section, and it, it it reached the maximum sort of uh, settlement when the TBM passed the marine drilling section of around 20 meters. <clears throat> and the volume loss um, is uh, control is of less than 1.5%, uh, which again, um, most of the section, it, it has quite a small uh, volume loss, which were a success. And the other monitoring um, scheme was also carried out was the, the, the lining deformation. So um, you can imagine, because uh, I will back to a few slides, um, you can imagine because the the westbound um, tunnel were constructed after, so so the, the, the lining of the eastbound uh, was monitored to make sure the construction of the westbound did not uh, cause any significant deformation and displacement to the to the, uh, the existing tunnel, which was the eastbound that was constructed first, and the. Um, the monitoring scheme showed um, the um, uh, the, the mo monitored uh, result agreed well with the predicted and the desired values. So that's also an important um, monitoring uh, item uh, to make sure um, the uh, structure of the tunnel lining is is safe for the um, for the existing tunnel um, uh, lining uh, to ensure the success. Um, and again, uh, from this project, there are a few, there are a few thoughts on, on the, the role of uh, ACECC and Technical Committee uh, DC28. So the monitoring scheme, you can imagine, is, can be very expensive, but it's not about this project, but without a, a, a thought of and clear guidance, Expensive doesn't mean it's, it's best value for money. And from my understanding, every project is funded by uh, one sponsor, a different sponsor. So they may have different approach to have uh, the monitoring scheme planned and financed. And it's very important to not to reinvent the wheel so that if you if we have an overarching guidance, then we can catalyze the project, avoid any potential caveats, and save the money, but also have the quality, reliability, with the low cost, and bring out the best better uh, 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 value for the money being spent, and 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 and. and because of DC28 and also ICECC um, uh, cover this sort of area. And I understand in the Southeast Asia, at least at two, two countries, there are a significant uh, amount of tunnel projects being planned. So um, I would like to suggest if we can have a, an overarching uh, guidance on this uh, topic that could be beneficial for the uh, member country. So this is an example of the a very generic guidance from the uh, British uh, Tunneling Society on how to uh, conduct of the best practice for tunnel uh, for for under underground work monitoring system. So first of all, they will uh, identify the monitoring system objective 
and uh, stakeholders, then they would carry on to define the monitoring system scope and output requirements, draft the specification, design and review and assess, and then this may be repeated a few times to reach out the final decision. Uh, then it's proceed to uh, procure commission monitoring system and go to the pre-construction preparation to establish the uh, baseline and then carry on during the construction, what happens after the construction. And the last bit is the bit that needs attention. So basically, such a huge project, it could bring out a lot of data. And I believe those data should be shared uh, for later project to be to, to learn from the previous project and to do better. And um, unfortunately, I not, I'm not I, I cannot attend the, um, the the session, but I think it's it's one of the um, the uh, within the capacity of of uh, DC twenty eight to 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 delete this overarching guidance uh, that should combine the country's specific requirements because each country they have a such different approach limitation requirements and also stakeholders requirement to have a project specific requirement and i hope um this is this this can be useful for the the future of the tunnel project in south asia thank you very much for your attention and my email is available at the, the beginning of the slide and i'm happy to discuss this further if uh, needed thank you very much Professor Bean is, cannot uh, make it for this time, but it's very nice of him to uh, propose some, uh, suggesting some gui uh, guidelines and approach for uh, infra uh, monitoring for this time. Then uh, the final presentation is is about the road management. Uh, it is going to be done by uh, Dr. Dobashi. Uh, who is online and he's from uh, uh, Shutoko uh, Metropolitan Expressway Company in Japan. So, Tobashi-san, please, uh, can you share your screen and, and start presentation? Uh. Is it shared? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, and it's as it is shared. It's fine. Okay. okay. Yes. Can, can you see the? Can you see my slide? Right? Yes, we can see it. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, today, I'm Hiroshi Dobashi from uh, Shitoko Technology Center. I'd like to introduce phase three road management with monitoring technology this evening. Uh, this is the contents of today. And uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, it, uh, I mentioned about that, uh, about this, uh, uh, Professor Yamaguchi uh, mentioned already at the beginning of this seminars, and uh, we are now uh facing a couple of changes in so social and uh, environmental uh, uh, social environment and the structure and the infrastructure changes in japan first of all the aging of infrastructure will be will rapidly increase in the future so that uh, there's a concern about the deterioration of damage to the structures and the second of all the shortage of human resources due to decrease in the working po uh, age population so that uh, sto uh, shortage of engineers who are responsible for the infrastructure construction and maintenance due to the decline in the working po age populations and the third one is challenge we are now challenges in dealing with the intention in instification of disasters caused by recent extremely extreme weather events and earthquake directly under the Tokyo metropolitan areas. So therefore, it is necessary to establish the maintenance management system, such as a platform that enables timely and appropriate repair and reinforcement and disaster prevention 
information system that enables rapid response to unusual and emergency situations by utilizing digital technologies, sharing and the integrated management of data by building a data platform. Uh, so, uh, first one, the uh, first issues, uh, we are now uh, tackling to uh, implement the digital twin with data platform. Uh, I'm not going to uh, explain uh, describe about this in this evening, but uh, just uh, show that briefly uh, that the concept of this the twin collecting online sensor data, not only online sensor data, but online sensor data from the physical space. These are should be integrated in and sorted in the GIS platform over here. And big data are uh, analyzed by AI and the simulations and solutions are feed back to the infrastructure in the physical space again. So we could realize more efficient and advanced infrastructure management through digital twin that, that seamlessly integrate and utilize data throughout a uh, life cycle from survey design and construction to the maintenance and the management. To realize digital twin, we need to develop and integrate advanced technologies such as I just uh, show the keywords and the key technologies here. There are a couple, uh, three, uh, uh, three uh, keywords. One is uh, remote, remote monitoring. That's today's topic, and remote diagnosis and remote control, and non-contact, uh, non-contact and non-destructive. That means uh, sensing technology, sensing sensor, image sensor, laser, and right radar. Those kind of the uh, sensing technologies. And third one is online and real time. That is uh, high speed communication such as 5G and uh, in a couple of years, uh, 60s and IoT and the cloud technologies. So we need to require uh, the develop and integra integrate the advanced and this, this kind of technology to realize the digital twin. So I'm going to introduce the application of the monitoring to the infrastructure management. This is their descriptions as uh, Nakano mentioned at the beginning, uh, inspection and diagnosis of the road structure is basically conducted through uh, periodic inspections, that is by cross uh, visual inspection every five years in Japan. This is by law. And however, there are issues uh, with the adequacy and cost and efficiency of the diagnosis, such as the person conducting the inspection changes each time. And also there is a risk that the result may differ depending on the skill of the inspector. And also close visual inspections are very expensive. So therefore, with recent development of sensor sensing technologies, data analysis and analysis technologies and communication technologies, uh, we believe that uh, introducing monitoring into the current maintenance and management operations will help uh, solve some of the uh, inspections and diagnosis is issues. Doesn't work. Okay. So today, I'd like to introduce the two uh, use cases, two examples of the uh, monitoring. First one is uh, uh, for the normal inspections to predict the fatigue deteriorations of the existing reinforced concrete slab by monitoring and the advanced uh, analysis. Objective of this study uh, is to predict its service life, predict the service life of the reinforced concrete uh, concrete slab. This is a target bridges. It is already, uh, this is a uh, metropolitan expressways, uh, viaduct structures. And, uh, this is a target of the uh, structures and, uh, plate guarders and the reinforced concrete slabs. First, uh, to determine the deterioration of the bridge in service, we measure uh, this, uh, this uh, deflections. And to measure the deflections, we use, uh, uh, where is that? Oh, 
fiber optic sensors on the laser Doppler. And uh, we verified the in-situ measurement result by vehicle loading running test and the laser Doppler and the optical fibers. And also, and also we construct the analytical model for the verification of the uh, deterioration of the strap. This is a model of the structures and uh, this is uh, uh, specifications of reinforced concrete slab. And this uh, bridge already reinforced by adding the six gutters and the five uh, additional transfer gutters and also uh, this uh, reinforced concrete slab reinforced with steel plate at the edge of the reinforced RC slab. And this is the result and the comparison of the analysis and the measured result, measurement result. Uh, this green line show the measurement and the red line is the result analysis result by the uh, uh, con uh, conditions, which is uh, conditions of which is uh, completed just uh, right after the construction. And after reinforcement, this kind of a waving result is uh, analysis at current. The reason why that this waving is that uh, I load the uh, I load the vehicle uh, weight at all once. So that's why the bridge is vibrating at us to some extent. That's why. However, the measurement data and the analysis result were close agreement each other's. Now, I just carry out the uh, uh, modeling, carry out the modeling and verify the model. Then uh, I carry out the wheel load test and the fatigue analysis to verify the, uh, to predict the uh, lifetime of the reinforced concrete slab. Here, this is a uh, equipment to measure the strain, uh, to measure the strain response to the fatigue propagations by the optical fiber sensors. And this is a wheel load running test equipment. And this is a model, analytical analysis model. And uh, we carried out already a couple of uh, computations. So, and uh, we need to uh, change the conditions such as the boundary conditions like this. And also, uh, loading condition is uh, multiplied 1.1 because of the this slab is uh, already deteriorate, uh, deteriorate. So there are a couple of the cracks on this uh, reinforced concrete slab. That's why we changed the couple of conditions such as this and the uh, boundary conditions. As a result, and this is a result of the uh, testing, red line testing. And the uh, green, uh, blue one is analysis before the boundary condition is changed. And after the cha uh, uh, after changing the boundary conditions and the uh, load conditions, uh, this green dotted line is green line is uh, analysis results. So it is expected to. Uh, so by this uh, uh, analysis. Uh, it is it will be expected to predict deterioration damage of reinforced concrete slab by analysis based on in situ measurement result like this. But still, we have uh, differences between around here. By this uh, analysis, it is I hope it is possible to carry out the timely and appropriate repair and reinforcement of structures. So this is one uh, example that we are now developing. And this is second example. This is for the emergency case. After the huge, uh, uh, after the uh, a large earthquake happened, the road administrator or bridge owner requires a need to know these kind of the dark, these kind of the informations, such as joint uh, joint level and joint openings and uh, lateral displacement as well as damage to the bearings and uh, 
tilting angle of the peers. So this uh, load administrator is very really requires this kind of uh, information just right after the earthquake. So how to get the, this information? We now developing a sensor. So uh, in between the girders, we have the, this kind of the sensors to detect lateral displacement, the opening of the joint and difference in the level, and also uh, to measure the tilting angle of the piers. And then these uh, from this, these sensors, uh, the, uh, the result is transmitted to the cloud, and then uh, this result is shown on this uh, platform, map of, of, of the platform. This is the objective, uh, this is a BCP, objective of the BCP. We need to know those kind of the, these kind of the, uh, those kind of the uh, informations uh, within uh, three hours. However, in the case of the to Tohoku earthquake, uh, 2011, at that time, it took about one day to get to, to get the informations. Uh, so we now developing the, these kind of the um, sensors, first of all, uh, trigger sensor, GNS sensor, and inclinometers. This is target earthquake damage. Uh, as I mentioned, difference in the level, more than five centuries or not, and gaps in longitudinal directions, and gaps in transverse directions, and the peer inclin inclination of the peers. Those damage may block the passage of the emergency vehicles as well. So we develop uh, three kinds of the uh, five kinds of the uh, sensors. But the, today I'm going to uh, introduce uh, three types of the sensors. What, first of all, the trigger sensors. Component is trigger sensor, wireless communication module, and battery. So this sensor installed, uh, this trigger sensor installed between the gutters and piers on each side of the joint. And trigger sensor is activated when the relative displacement of two ends of the trigger ex sensor exceeds the uh, threshold. To verify the sensors, we uh, carry out the, uh, this kind of shape, uh, shape repair experiment. And then this trigger sensor will be activated after exceeding the threshold values. The second one is GNS sensors. That component is pair of uh, antennas and the CPU, GPS, and the wireless communication modules and the batteries. So uh this antenna is installed in each side of the joint and detect the damage by the relative displacement to antennas now actually on the yokohama bay bridge uh we are now carrying out the field testing and record the data twice a day from august 25 20 23rd now fortunately uh, there's no uh, earthquake so only the summer expansion and the uh, contraction of the bridge can be detected like this. This is just a difference between, um, due to the summer uh, uh, temperatures. And third one is inclinometers. Component is the inclinometer, wireless communications, and the module and the batteries to detect the incl uh, inc inclination of the piers in a static state. Now, we are now measuring the residual angles, but in the future, we like to detect the uh, maximum angle of the pier, maximum angle of the inclination of the piers to estimate the uh, seismic performance of the reinforced concrete piers. Now we are now uh, carrying out the field test uh, on five piers of uh, Shinji line. This is an uh, existing uh, line uh, network of the Metropolitan Expressway. About, uh, about for about a half year. And this is the recorded data, but this is also uh, fortunately we ha don't have the 
uh, earthquake, huge earthquake. So this is just in this level. So currently, we are trying to measure the angle of inclinations, residual, uh, residual angle of the inclinations, and then estimate how what is uh, uh, how the uh, seismic performance of this uh, concrete piers. But in the futures, we, we are now trying to obtain the maximum angle of the pier inclinations to uh, estimate appropriate, more accurate evaluation of structural performance after the earthquake. Now I'd like to summarize my presentations for the futures. The analysis for predicting the deterioration of reinforced concrete slab and evaluation of seismic performance of piers and after earthquake uh, introduced by using monitoring. Such a monitoring can be applied to ordinary maintenance or normal time maintenance and also disaster management enables to enable uh, enable phase free infrastructures management. That means uh, normal time and emergency time uh, will be uh, carried out with, with phase free. In addition, by analyzing and evaluating the measured and accumulated data such as uh, displacement and the tilting angle and the vibration and the images, etc., etc., damage detection and the deformation can be visualized and, and screen, screened. And the various simulations can be performed in advance to select and to choose appropriate measures and uh, predict future behavior. The result then uh, uh, deserves uh, feedback into the real space again through the digital twin and uh, realize and it is possible to uh, estimate uh, how the structures is going on in the cyberspace. And by utilizing the online sensor information, for instance, today I presented uh, remote monitoring and the remote inspection and the remote equipment failure recovery will become possible, uh, which will speed up the decision making of load administrator and improve productivities, including infrastructure maintenance and management, as well as disaster prevention measures, and realize a sustainable society through the data-driven infrastructure management. Uh, thank you for your kind attention. Okay, thank you, Dovashan. Um, this is the end of the uh, presentation we prepared. And uh, we thank all the presenters uh, for wonderful presentation today. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, significant displacement to the, to the surrounding um, and, um, buildings. Actually, the uh, time is running out, and maybe uh, audience are too hungry to discuss. But uh, uh, the, yes, um, this is the, the good opportunity for magnitude and also the extent of the monitoring data. Um, as you can see here, this is a typical section along the route. There are two sections, uh, three sections that I'm presenting today. Yes, that's good <laughs> issue, <laughs> big issues. Um, anybody has some comments? Reinforcing power or the precision tendons, but when you have the initial corrosion, we cannot detect by the ND technology. You have to just uh, break out concrete and then look at the inside. <laughs> the partial, yeah, yeah, partial destructive uh, testing. That's the only way.
But the one possibility is the location of corrosion is uh, specifically we can e be expect for different type of structures and different properties. Then uh, we just focus on that area. This is common practice. Uh, he presented that there's a uh, deflection in the uh, dry state, uh, dry state. Uh, last present of, uh, uh, presentation, there's a uh, deformation of that uh, uh, deflection in a dry state, uh, dry state. Uh, I, my question is, is there any uh, difference between dry state and the wet state uh, for the deflection? <laughs> Thank you so much. That's all. <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, th this is a big difference between the dry stage and the uh, wet stage. In the case of the wet, in that case, uh, the, the time of the deterioration is much faster than the dry uh, case. Yeah, uh, that means uh, deflection. Deflection in the dry stage and the deflection in the wet stage is uh, different. Any difference? Or, or I, I want to note that 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 one. Yeah? Yeah, and, and, and the time, time for the deterioration is different. So now, first first step, first step uh, we, we just, just uh, uh, carry out the uh, calibration uh, analysis, analysis for the dry, dry stage. stage. But then, then uh, uh, we uh, also we have, have the uh, experimental uh, result of the wet, wet uh, conditions. conditions. So, so we need, we need to, to uh, verify the models, the models like, again. again. Thank you so much. About the uh, the monitoring the deterioration, actually, is uh, we knew that <laughs> it's kind of difficult to do this. But uh, in the guideline, especially the salt attack, coronary attack to the RC structures, there are some sensors uh, used uh, for for the references. So it could be uh, maybe maybe good re references for <laughs> you to utilize them. So do you have any other comments and questions? Actually, so uh, today we have uh, some practical devices and especially the ICT technologies and not just only uh, civil engineer side, but it's collecting and also transferred, uh, transmitted. And that's kind of uh, important for infrastructures too and also Digital twin technologies, uh, kind of those are inevitable from now on <laughs> to for monitoring, monitoring uh, infrastructure monitoring. So uh, there are many ways, there are many services that we can uh, use in the, uh, for the monitoring, depending on the purposes. So uh, using the, the guidelines that ASIC uh, we try to do, try to uh, open, uh, we can discuss and then actually use it in practical way, then see how <laughs> it goes and then for the maintenance. That's what, uh, what, what I just uh, you know, feel <laughs> for this session after uh, listening to this session. Um, if you no know, other comments or so? No? So, Professor Yamaguchi at the Closing remarks. <laughs> Could you summarize and give us some remarks? Well, there were so many issues that discussed, so not easy to summarize. But anyway, uh, it is important to maintain the infrastructures for the society, for our lives. And uh, one thing you can do is the inspection, visual inspection. But it could tell you that the, the structure might be damaged or so, but what we need is to quantify how bad the structure becomes and then to that end, I think monitoring could be very helpful and with the advanced technology of sensor technologies, it is now possible. And the issue here is how to apply those sensor technologies for our purpose. That's all I want to say. And then hopefully together with the members and the people here, we could contribute to this to that end and TC would be 
we should do for that end. Thank you very much for your attendance today, and we'll see you again sometime. Right? The presenters, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.